Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we will continue with part two of GATE 2024 solutions uh, for geology. In the previous video, we discussed the solutions of the general aptitude part as well as uh, the first 24 questions from the geology part. And now we'll do the next remaining questions. Uh, so the question number 25, a confined aquifer with uniform saturated thickness of 10 meter has a hydraulic conductivity of 10 raised to the power minus centimeter per second. Considering steady flow, the transmissivity of the aquifer, you have to calculate. So saturated thickness is given as 10 meter. So B is equal to 10 meters. Now important thing here in this question is you already know, first of all, the formula for transmittivity is B that is thickness into hydraulic conductivity. But one thing to keep in mind is the units in which the question is being asked meter squares per day. Okay. So the hydraulic conductivity is 10 raised to the power minus 2 centimeter per second. And considering a steady state flow, the transmittivity of aquifer is in meters per square day is how much. Okay. So this is something that we have to calculate. Uh, meter square per, per day to centimeter per second. Okay. So K, let's convert K to these units and uh, because this is already in meters and you're being asked here in meters so there is no need to change the thickness part okay so k is given to you as 10 raised to power minus 2 centimeter per second okay which is equal to 10 raised to power minus 4 meters per second so 1 centimeter is 1 by 100 of a meter okay now this is the second part of it is in meter square per day so this second also we have to cover per day okay so because second is in denominator, okay, and one second is one by three six zero zero into like uh, sixteen to sixty, which is three six zero zero into twenty four hours. But it is in denominator. All that come will come into numerator. Another way of thinking of this is that if in in one second, okay, it is covering ten raised to power minus four meters. So in one day, it will be covering more distance. Okay, so that is how these sixty one second has 60 minutes they will all be coming in numerator only not in denominator you have to multiply not divide so one second has 60 minutes okay and one sorry there are 60 one minute has 60 seconds and to get one hour you have 60 minutes and then in a day you have 24 hours okay so this is now in meter per day your hydraulic conductivity now you can use this in t equals to kb formula so here is equal to 10 times okay so 3600 okay so this will become basically into 10 raised to power minus 4 will become 0 0.36 into 24 which is basically 24 into 3.6 this is what you should do in exam final calculation this will be 86.4 okay so many times like these kind of calculations are pretty simple I would recommend like when you do these things in exam, not use calculator for such, such, such small simple calculations. Even though you can't do like direct multiplication, trust me, it will be faster if you do these calculations yourself. Because now what will happen is if you have to go to calculator, then you have to pick up the mouse and instead of just marking answer, you have to type those in. Okay, you lose concentration and it takes similar time to, to, to do this calculation. Uh, but if you do it on your like piece of paper you're already working with so you have, you have solved this whole question on that piece of paper and you have to do multiplication there only so if you were to multiply let's say 36 into 20 uh, 24 and then there is a decimal here you know 4 6 are 24 this is 148 and then you can see 36 into 2 should be 72 and then 8 6 8 and then you get sorry this was 24 so 86 point 8 point 86.4 because there is one decimal so you get the correct answer like much quicker so don't use calculators for such simple calculations it's not that you will get wrong answer uh, in my experience it is uh, much faster and you will not lose concentration okay the next question a current of 2 ampere passes through a cylindrical rod with uniform cross-sectional area of 4 meter square so the rod is pretty thick 4 meter square cross-sectional area okay And resistivity rho equals to 100 ohm meter. The magnitude of electric field along the, so first of all you have to calculate magnitude. Electric field is a vector quantity, so it will have direction also. So sometimes if it is uh, in opposite direction to your frame of reference, uh, to your coordinate system, then 
uh, you may have negative sign but here they have asked only the magnitude part of it and for that we can use to calculate the magnitude we can use the ohms law which is j equals to sigma e okay so this is just like another version of uh, what you see as v equals to i r okay uh, where r is resistance so this is another form of it you can solve this question using this formula also okay but if you have gone through our courses you know like this is a pretty standard formula for ohms law as well in addition to v equals to i r but if you are doing like v equals to i r what you will do is v is potential okay so Poten change in potential per unit distance is your electric field so like v by if your distance is l okay i r resistance is equals to r equals to rho l by a okay so this should be uh, potential is equal to basically change in electric field per unit distance okay so change in electric field uh, sorry v we have to put okay so this will be e into l sorry i wrote by l it is v by l is equal to e change in potential per unit length okay so this l will get cancelled and uh, so e becomes equal to i by a into rho okay i by a is current density so j equals to e by rho equals to 1 by rho is basically sigma e so in this equation if you are using this directly you could use like from here also but here if you want to use this so j equals to because sigma is not given to you sigma is conductivity but we are given which is reciprocal of uh, resistivity so we'll use this relation okay j is equal to i by a so i will write that i by a over here okay now current resistivity 2 ampere current is flowing okay so i will use this formula to everything is in si units and the final answer being asked is also in si units so there is no unit conversion needed for this particular question so all you need to do is is i put area will be pi because it is cylindrical so the area of cross section will be pi r square or sorry area is already given to you so you don't have to do pi r square so you can directly use 4 over there okay 1 by rho is 1 by 100 into e you have to calculate okay so you know if you solve this e will come out to be 50 volt per meter okay so here as i said volt per meter v by l okay so volt per meter all right which one of the following lineations can be observed on on a which of the following lineations can be observed on a foliation with an attitude this so foliation is a plane so attitude of plane is given to you this is strike value and this is your dip value and it is dipping northwest so it is kind of a plane like that which is dipping in that direction towards northwest if that is your let's say north direction would be somewhere here okay so it is something like that or well, let's say if so it is dipping towards northwest direction like that okay uh, so this direction on this side I'm using black color for that so this is 210 degrees north okay so the dip should be 90 degree from this okay so in that way okay so the dip direction is you can see 210 plus 90 it is 300 degree okay so this is the dip direction and the dip amount with respect to horizontal if you have to calculate so let me use different color for that again green so with respect to horizontal your dip amount is given to us 40 degree okay so these are lineations one thing you will notice in all these options is that lineation the plunge is 40 degrees okay so basically the plunge is 40 degree so whenever you have let's say a plane i will draw it slightly differently in this way so that it becomes easy to demonstrate so lineation is basically uh, the linear feature now it is existing on a foliation it is observed on a foliation so 
it can be observed in different orientations if it is observed like this that is if it is parallel to the strike of the plane okay because strike is not dipping it is horizontal so your lineation is also not plunging okay lineation could be plunging like this or like this or like this so basically what happens is when the lineation is parallel to the strike it has zero plunge okay when it is perpendicular to the strike then the plunge of lineation equals to dip of the plane okay which in this case you see here okay 40 degrees and this is also 40 degrees so plunge is equal to dip okay this is kind of also similar to true dip apparent dip okay so your apparent dip is equal to true dip in when in which case where the apparent dis, dip section is 90 degree to strike okay so this is the strike of the plane okay for any other situation so for example here it will be between 0 degree and the dip of the plane okay so this is what we will see okay and and again we have discussed this in detail in our courses like when you have any line on a plane it also occurs in flutis classification of folds where you have fold hinge and axle plane relationship whenever you have a line on a plane the maximum plunge of the line possible is equal to the dip of the plane minimum plunge possible is zero degree okay so in here you see all these are 40 degrees so this will only occur when the 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 the, the lineation is 90 degrees to the strike another way of saying that is pitch should be equal to this strike is equal to plunge when pitch is equal to 90 degrees so you have to add 90 degrees to 210 so the correct answer should be a over here okay so a should be the correct answer for this question okay match the mineral groups with corresponding cleavage types okay so diopside is a pyroxene mineral okay they are typically prismatic so it is kind of like an easy question i would say galena it has cubic cleavage so you when you see galena crystals they often have these cubes like this and if you have seen fluorite crystals okay they are also very easy to identify as when they are euhedral in nature they form these octahedrons okay this is galena okay so fluorite typically shows this octahedral cleavage calcite also very standard okay it belongs to rhombohedral crystal system okay so calcite has this kind of rhombohedral cleavage and then finally if you were to draw diopside so prismatic means a uh, set of parallel faces parallel to a particular axis okay so based on these so p goes with 3 q goes with 1 r goes with 4 and s goes with 2 so the correct answer is c for this particular question the composition of which of the following reservoirs closely matches with iron meteorites okay so you know you have like stony meteorites you have stony iron meteorites and then you have iron meteorites so stony meteorites are rich in calcite stony iron both and iron meteorites are rich in iron so you know if you compare the structure of the earth so you have core in the center and then surrounded by mantle okay so these are also called chondrites so chondrite basically is a stony iron meteorite only this is your core you know which is made up of iron mantle just one second so these were like let me close that Yeah, 
so that's what I thought okay this should be contract that we're seeing over here okay so this contract is a stony meteorite not stony iron meteorite okay so chondrite is a stony meteorite so these basically you can see here the core is let me put this here okay mantle is basically silicate and crust i will ignore for the timing it is like very outer layer okay so when you see these kind of like meteorites so the iron meteorite basically when you see the stony chondrite meteorite it it represents what we call the bulk silicate earth. The silicates are present in the mantle and in the crust. Okay. So it is not exactly bulk silicate earth, but if you were to uh, see where which part it will correspond to, so it will correspond to the chondrites or stony meteorites will correspond to this part. Okay. Iron meteorites will correspond to this part over and stony iron meteorites will correspond to the whole earth, bulk earth. Okay. So iron meteorites, they closely match earth's core okay to match earth's core which of the microstructures uh, in group one match with basically their characteristics in, uh, in, in, in group two sometimes you can actually solve these problems okay just by looking at the wording you don't even need to know exactly what uh, what those textures mean I hope you all know these textures. Okay, these are part of like your metamorphic petrology. But if you see this core mantle texture, so kind of like, where, what is this like core mantle thing? Mantle is basically, core is the central part and anything that surrounds it is the mantle. Okay, that is the crust of the uh, structure of the earth. Okay, and in many terminologies in for example, paleontology where you'll see mantle core, those things. Okay, so the core is the central part and this is the mantle part okay so radiating fibrous aggregate doesn't like really describe this term so i will not ignore it i will not put it like any uh, consideration to this large strained mineral grain surrounded by fine grained crystallized grain so you can see something is surrounded there is a large strained mineral grain there is a large grain in the center it is surrounded by fine grain so kind of like matches this description of core and mantle inclusion trails in a porphyroblast curves into matrix foliation by developing concave outward pattern so basically you have porphyroblast curves into matrix foliation okay by developing concave outward pattern so you have like let's say this is a porphyroblast and this is your foliation I'm not even going to go through exact definition of these. I'm just trying to see if I can solve this problem based on your wording. Okay, there will always be two, three questions in exam which you can solve like that. And it is a very, very important skill to have. That is why I'm not giving exact definition of these textures. That is something like kind of a homework for you. You should go and find those for yourself. Okay, so large strained mineral grains surrounded by, find this we have already, inclusion trails in a porphyroblast curves into matrix foliation by developing. So this is a porphyroblast it has its own inclusions so kind of like concave outward so it will be kind of like merge into this outward foliation something like that okay or it could be I'm just trying to, I'm not even going through the exact definition of these textures because in the world there are so many textures, you cannot look at them all. Let's say something like this. So it has some internal foliation. Okay. And it becomes kind of like parallel to this outward foliation like this. Okay, so if you have ever seen a millipede, Okay, it is an arthropod which has many, many legs. Okay, milli stands for milk, comes from million, but it's, it doesn't have million legs, but it has many, many legs. Okay, 
so kind of like looks similar to that spherulite comes something like related to sphere and radiating fibrous aggregate of k feldspar with or without quad so radiating means you have something at center and then something radiates from it so kind of like seems similar to sphere uh, milli randomly oriented mineral grains dominated by crystal faces in such as sheet silicates uh, if you know like i think if you have gone through uh, metamorphic textures uh, you would like very easily recognize that is this decussate texture is has kind of like this uh, um, uh, description and it is typically seen in uh, zones of contact metamorphism okay so when you have grains like quartz which don't have kind of like a platy habit then you see texture like polygonal granoblastic if you have slightly uh, those grains which have preferred orientations then you start to get decussate textures okay so these are randomly oriented mineral grains dominated by crystal faces such as in sheet silicates okay so based on these description so i'll say this p goes with 2 if p goes with 2 you can see over here these options are already eliminated and then out of those you don't even so p goes with 2 q3 r1 s13 okay so you know decussate is 4 so q is 4 so this should be your correct answer okay you can match the other ones yourself which among the following is the least abundant sedimentary rock in the stratigraphic record uh you see basically in the stratigraphic record uh, most of these uh, for example shale would be most abundant and then sandstone and limestone are also pretty abundant roughly similar to one another least abundant is conglomerate conglomerate will be found in like regions where there is very very high energy such depositional environments are not uh i would say very common okay so the correct answer here will be conglomerate which of the following sequences of index minerals correctly represent order of increasing metamorphic grade during regional metamorphism sheet siliceous dolomitic limestone this is like pretty uh, simple question if you have gone through metamorphism of calcareous rocks uh, this is like image directly from our notes okay based of like taken from winter and you can see here the correct sequence here is as you go towards the uh, basically intrusion uh, you will see so this is the intrusion talc zone tremolite zone and diopside zone so the correct answer here is c evolution of force question very standard okay topic almost every year they ask one question based on this so out of these options which is the oldest horse genus so they have given orohippus mesohippus merichippus pliohippus okay so just based on these names okay so pliohippus you can see it will be close to pliocene okay which is pretty young so just like that you can ignore this option okay mesohippus the name meso stands something like for middle okay so this should not be the option so i will show you for example this is orohippus okay which is quite old then you have mesohippus and then you have merichippus and pliohippus these options are given to you this is pretty standard uh, evolution of horse chart so just based on this option you can see the correct answer here is orohippus the measured plate velocity is maximum at which of the following locations this is a repeat of an older question uh, so the correct answer here is maldives uh and you will see like notice like in most of these cases as you are moving south your plate velocity is increasing okay so relative plate velocity will increase as you are in deformation zone the plate velocities usually get lower okay because when something is moving and it is getting deformed at the same time the plate velocity will decrease so of these options the, where, where will you see lowest plate velocity you will see in lay okay and also it will depend on like how far you are from the oiler's pole as you are moving south you are also going further and further away uh, i think i had the values for these also let me see if i can find those uh, i kind of like had a map also for these
yes okay so these are those plate velocities okay so you can see this plate is moving that way okay so the euler's pole has to be somewhere over there okay some in this direction and the whole plate is moving that way so the euler's pole will be in that direction and these velocities that are there okay i can give you the values in different locations okay so there will be a northward component of velocity you see and then there will be an eastward component of velocity vectors north and east and i will give you the values of both these okay so you have the north component and the east component of velocity so combined these two just like your vector calculus you can do the resultant is the final velocity that you'll get okay so this is 34.97 all of these are in centimeter per year sorry millimeter per year 34.97 this is 42.74 so it is slightly it has more eastward component you can see here as you go over here you will start to get more eastward component all right now in in uh, this sorry this was not correct values this is for bangalore lay should be much less than this okay so lay you will see north is 21.74 and east is 24.94 delhi is 35.32 and 34.03 so delhi is roughly basically should be 45 degrees because the north component and east component are roughly similar so it should be almost 45 degrees okay uh, bangalore is uh, the value that i told you is 34.97 to 42.4 Seven four, so it gets more eastward, and Maldives is again thirty five point eight one to forty six point one five. If you were to calculate the final velocity, you can take uh, basically. Let me give you V N and V E. So you can take square root of V N square plus V E square to get the final velocity. But you can just like looking at these values, you can see the highest value is for Maldives. and as you get more and more away from deformation as you're like in the deformation belt you usually you'll see the lowest values which of the following textures is called chalcopyrite disease i think this image is not copied in right place let me delete this okay so basically it is chalcopyrite blebs in sphalerite so it is kind of like a factual question that you must know uh but let me see if i can give you an image of this texture okay yes maybe okay so this is the description and let me show you image it is typically basically formed by replacement okay in which chalcopyrite replaces sphalerite so i hope you know, all know what is sphalerite and what is chalcopyrite make this a little bit smaller this a little bit bigger okay so you have chalcopyrite blebs in sphalerite so sphalerite you know is zns okay and chalcopyrite is copper iron oxide so sorry copper iron sulfide so you have speckling of sphalerite with micrometer sized blebs of chalcopyrite is usually referred to as chalcopyrite disease iron rich sphalerites are particularly prone to chalcopyrite disease so some additional information you should know sometimes they repeat the previous question so which kind of sphal sphalerite is zns but it can have some impurities in it if it has like iron as impurity and uh, it is iron rich then it will be basically more prone to sphalerite disease okay so it is not due to ex solution it is not that uh, this this sphalerite is exalted from kind of like this impure mixture of sphalerite diffusion controlled replacement of iron by copper okay and sphalerite chalcopyrite coprecipitation are the most important mechanism that have been involved 
which of the following is the correct arrangement of volcanics from oldest to youngest okay so if you have like gone through p by q's of stratigraphy this question should be a cake uh, okay so you can see out of these first of all the youngest is is deccan okay which is 65 million years ago end of cretaceous so it should be in the end so typically you are left with c and a only uh, then raj mahal okay is so let me give you the ages so raj mahal is i will write it at the very top only so bijli is around 2.5 ga it is paleo proterozoic in age okay right after end of archean raj mahal okay is 100 million years ago okay so the feature you see on raj mahal the 90 east ridge in the indian ocean it is related to raj mahal traps you can still see that 90 east ridge it is like pretty recent malani is 745 M A it is part of Delhi supergroup. Okay, should know. And Bijli rhyolite is part of Dongolgarh supergroup. And this Bijli rhyolite has been asked like in many PYQs, so you should already be able to answer this question. So based on these ages, the correct answer should be C. That Bijli, then Malani, then Rajmahal, then Dekkan. I have added like few more uh, slides based on this. So, for example, Dongolgarh supergroup, we can see here uh, the Bijli formation, which are felsic volcanics. Okay, they are actually okay pyroclastics. Okay, so these are pyroclastics. They are usually very poorly sorted. You have uh, coarse grains, fine grains. Uh, related to volcanic ash, for example, and then uh, these are what form the Bijli formation. And rhyolite, you know, it will be exclusive. Okay, Bijli, it is a rhyolite. It should be exclusive. Exclusive group. Okay, so you can see here uh, the age is roughly two point five billion years ago. Okay, or two five zero zero ma. So you see where it is present. You have this Central Indian Tectonic Zone (CITZ). it is present just south of it okay uh, the malani volcanics will be present here the raj mahal traps are present over here and your deccan is this area deccan traps okay so you can see here uh, the malani volcanics they are basically not exactly delhi supergroup they are post delhi malani volcanics so let me write that over here post delhi supergroup okay which of the following types of deposit this is an msq type question are formed by fractional crystallization okay so you have basically your chromite deposits you know are typically uh, formed by fractional crystallization so those ultramafic hosted chromite deposits are uh, formed by fractional crystallization chromatite hosted nickel copper is not okay leucogranite uh, leucogranite hosted uranium is not anorthosite hosted titanium iron are uh, again your well, deposits which are formed by fractional crystallization which of the following sedimentary basins are producing hydrocarbons commercially this is like again i would say pretty standard question so you should know so you should go to your dgh website and all of you at least should have this in your notes what are different sedimentary basins of india and what is their corresponding category so we have basically three categories of sedimentary basins that are defined by the director general of hydrocarbons dgh so basins with reserves being produced and exploited this is what is being asked in the question so in this we have the krishna godavari basin mumbai offshore assam shelf rajasthan kaveri assam arkan fold belt cambe then in category 2 basins basically these are basins with contingent resources to be developed and monetized we know there are hydrocarbons there but they are not yet developed so those are saurashtra kach vindhyan mahanadi andaman and then finally we have category 3 basins which are basins with only prospective resources to be explored and discovered so we have not yet discovered those 
sources so these are basically all the remaining ones so if you see in this question which of the following are producing hydrocarbons commercially ganga is not so you can see here ganga will be in category 3 okay the indo gangetic plain the ganga and the ganga punjab area this is category 3 okay so this option a all the pink colors are category 3 that is not what they are asking what they are asking is this green colored basins okay so no krishna godavari kg okay so this is this number one this is green okay this is option b so that one is green so that one is producing so this is category one this is category three this is category one kerala konkan okay so it is this 13 number over here this is option number c again pink category three so not a correct option and kaveri basin okay again this is this number five this is option d so that is also a producing basin from category one so the correct option options will be b and c which of the following uh, bivalves are swimmers okay so uh, basically your lima and pectens pectens are uh, typically very uh, like one of the few bivalves which are swimmers okay a lot of bivalves may be basically they could be buried inside the sediment they can live on top of sediment okay but pectens are free swimmers they usually use swimming to get away from let's say danger okay these for example if you look at telina this is in funnel that is buried Which of the following structures is R again MSQ type with duplexes in fold thrust weld. So what is a duplex? So duplex is a structure where you have thrust. Let's say there is a thrust here and then there is a thrust which branches off from here and goes up and then there is another thrust which branches off above there. And then you have to have a roof thrust also. So basically you have a floor thrust. You have a roof thrust okay so you have a roof thrust and a floor thrust and if you have these thrust two thrusted then you will also have a horse so horse is basically this block which is on all sides surrounded by faults okay you will not see horses in case of imbricate fan so what will be imbricate fan so imbricate fan will be thrusts like this so there is no roof thrust in this case so it is kind of like it can sometimes fan out like this okay so this is an imbricate fan it is not a duplex so it will not be correct answer for imbricate fan so that will not be the correct option sorry okay let me give you an image also of this so typically a horse will look like this Okay, so you can see here there is roof thrust, there is four floor thrust. Okay, so this whole structure is called a duplex, and the block in between this rock mass is called a horse. This is a duplex structure. Which of the following are correct? Again, MSQ type. Okay, karst topography is formed in limestone. Simple, yes. Fjords are formed by Eolian activities no they are glacial oxbow lakes are formed in fluvial environment correct ventifacts are formed by glaciers that is also wrong they are of aeolian in nature okay they are formed by wind activity consider the solubility product of barite at 25 degrees celsius and one bar pressure to be 10 raised to power minus 10 so ksp is equal to 10 raised to power minus 10 and you know what will be the dissolution of barite baso4 okay so if we write the equilibrium equation it will be barium 2 positive plus so4 2 minus okay so if this is a solid you can take its concentration as 1 and if x amount of its dissol dissolved so it can become 1 minus x but for solids we always take it as 1 only irrespective of their concentration okay so and doesn't have to be necessarily xx over here that is like when you put and it is dissociating okay if any given situation is given to you you can add for example more barium from outside which can change these values okay so let's say what is being given to you is 
we'll say this activity of barium 2 plus and activity of SO4 2 minus. So you know your KSP is equal to A barium 2 plus raised to the power because the coefficient here is 1. Let me write 1 over here. The coefficient here is also 1 and here is also 1. So it will be raised to the power 1 over here into I don't need to write those square brackets. I will just write. Okay, let me write those brackets because I need to use the power. Activity of SO4 2 minus raised to power 1 divided by BASO4 raised to the power 1 again. Okay, so these values are given to you. Okay, and KSP is 10 raised to power minus 10. Activity of barium 2 plus is 5 into 10 raised to power minus 5. 0.5 into 10 raised to power minus 5. Basically, which is 5 into 10 raised to power minus 6. Okay. Dot activity raised to power 1 of SO4 2 minus is 10 raised to power minus x. And that is just 1. Okay. So now you just need to solve this equation. Okay. So what is given to you is this is 1. Uh, I will write those values there also. This is 0 0.5 into 10 raised to power minus 5 and this is 10 raised to power minus x. Okay. So if you solve it, you will get 10 raised to power minus 10 is equal to 0 0.5 into and then you can basically take 0 0.5 there. This is 1 divided by 0 0.5 will be 2. So 2 into 10 raised to power and then you can take this minus 5 also over there. Okay. So this will become 2 into 10 raised to power minus 5. So let me actually write this whole thing down. 10 raised to power minus 10 divided by 0 0.5 into 10 raised to power minus 5 equals to 10 raised to power minus x which implies 2 into 10 raised to power minus 5 equals to 10 raised to power minus x. Now to solve this question you at least should know something about logarithms. Okay that is very very important. So what you can do is you can keep you can like uh, take log on both sides. Okay so if you take log on this side and log on this side. You could just like already you know here just x will be equal to minus x will be equal to log 10 of this whole thing okay uh, so you can take directly like that also okay so minus x is basically equal to or you can take log on both sides either way so log of log to the base 10 of 2 into 10 raised to power minus 5 equals to log 10 of 10 raised to power minus x which implies log I will just ignore this 10 script over there log 2 minus 5 okay is equal to minus x okay if you solve this problem now so x will be equal to log 2 minus 5 5 5 minus log 2 x will become equals to 4.69 okay so that will be the correct answer here 4.69 43 the support pressure of 20 kPa is required to stabilize loops blocks in the excavation disturbed zone okay in the crown of a tunnel so you have this tunnel okay so there is certain zone area the disturbed zone So support pressure, total pressure required for this is 20 kPa. So you need a support of 20 kPa. At the crown of a tunnel with horizontal axis. Okay. So the axis horizontal means tunnel is horizontal like this. The excavation disturbed zone is to be stabilized by inserting rock bolts. So you have to insert bolts okay vertical into the roof if the working capacity of a bolt is 160 kilo newton so the force the load that each single bolt can support is 160 kilo newton l stands for load the area of the roof supported by a single bolt in meter square is so basically pressure is independent of area okay so whatever the area of disturbed zone is uh, per unit area you need you need 20 kilo newtons of force 
that is what 20 kPa means okay so you need a pressure of this so all you have to do is you know like pressure equals to force upon area in this case the force is basically load upon area area you have to calculate this will be basically load upon pressure okay so you know like that is 160 kilo newtons okay so 160 kilo newtons divided by pressure is 20 kPa so you could do like 160 into 10 raised to power 3 20 into 10 raised to power 3 the 10 raised to power 3 will get cancelled so i'm not you writing that because both are in kilo newtons and kilo pascal so ultimately this will be 8 okay meter square okay the answer will be in si units because newton and pascal are si units now you can ask like it is kilo newtons and kilo pascal you can convert them into newton and pascal you will still get the same answer that is 8 question number 44 the areas of drainage of basins A and B are 25 km square and 50 km square. So there is a basin A with streams here. Okay, let me draw this. This is one drainage basin. This is another one which is bigger one. Okay, so these are streams which are coming here and it also has streams. Okay, this is 25 kilometer square. This is A, this is B, this is 50 kilometer square. The total length of the stream. So if you are add all the length, so summation we call it Li is equal to in basin A is 20 kilometers. And summation Li, that length of individual stream, and you add all them up is equal to we don't know what it is here. Okay. If both the basins have same drainage density, so the drainage density, let's call it DD, is equal to summation Li divided by total drainage area. Okay, is, is same for both of these situations that DDA equals to DDB. So let, I'll just move it over here. Okay, so DDA is equal to DDB, that is summation Li by a a equals to summation l i by a area of b okay let's say this is l i this is summation of uh, in both this case i'll just write it like this only so you know this is l i summation in this case is 20 divided by area of a is 25 summation l i divided by area b is 50 so th the question says they are both equal they are same drainage density Okay, so you can solve here that summation Li for B will be equal to 50 into 20 divided by 25 equals to 40 kilometers. Okay, so the drainage here should be 40 kilometers. Okay, always keep in mind the units. Okay, so again, the next one is a fact based question from stratigraphy. Okay, so I will just give you the correct answer it is B okay so the Rumdandam sandstone is from Godavari basin okay Raipur formation is from Chhattigarh basin Bagalkot group okay is again with Kalag uh, Kaladagi basin and Sonia sandstone is from Marwar which of the following openings is a type of decline in underground mines the correct answer is spiral tunnel okay so what are these different uh, terminologies that we are seeing over here so cross cut basically is a horizontal or inclined underground passage that intersects the main tunnel or drift providing access to ore bodies another thing cross cut is not basically parallel to the overall trend of the ore body okay it is kind of like perpendicular a veins is an inclined or vertical underground shaft that connects different levels of a mine for transportation of ore so it will connect uh, one level to another drift is a underground passage driven along the vein or ore body so a drift is parallel to the trend of the ore body cross cut is not spiral tunnel underground tunnel that follows a spiral or helical path basically and a decline can be a spiral tunnel which circles either flanks of the deposits okay or circles around the deposit okay decline begins with a box cut which is a portion of which is basically portal to the surface 
Shaft is a primary vertical or non-vertical opening through the mine strata that connects the surface with underground workings. So here the correct answer is spiral tunnel for this one. You can see here your, your decline can be a spiral tunnel. All right, which of the following optic signs is correct for mineral in the given centered axis figure? Centered optic axis figure. So this is OA figure. Okay, so optic axis figure that itself tells you it is biaxial. Okay, there is no optic, I mean, uh, in not really. Okay, the thing is like these different kinds of figures, optic axis figure, uh, acute bisectrics, obtuse bisectrics, optic normal figure. We all discuss this for biaxial. For uniaxial, all of them are optic axis. So usually you don't specify optic axis. You specify this for biaxial minerals. Okay. Uh, now in this particular, another way to tell that is this, this is like highly curved and passing through the center. You see like your uniaxial figures are typically like this. If it is centered, it will be like this. If it is off centered, it will become like this. Okay, the isogyres are also straight. So this is a biaxial figure. Now how to tell whether it is biaxial positive or negative. So you can imagine there is this one isogyre here, the another one could be there outside the field of view. Okay, and you can see here the color here is yellow. So on that side it will be yellow. Okay, and in between it is blue. This is blue. Okay, so all you have to do is basically for these uh, optic sign determinations is take yellow join them together and if you see a plus sign over here then it is a positive so by actual positive no need to like go into too much detail this is the trick uh, that that we teach in our course and can be used to determine the optic sign if this was yellow let's say if the situation was that this is given to you as yellow Okay, then you can see here all the yellow is here. You make connect yellow like this. This is a negative sign. Okay, this is like this. This is like this. If they are not crossing. So this is not positive. Match the following vertebrates in group one with their morphological features in group two. Okay, go to that. So this is forty-seven number trilobite. Okay, you know like it has hypostome. What is hypostome? So hypostome is the hard, okay, mouth part of trilobite found on ventral side. So what do you mean by ventral means which is facing the substrate the ground basically the bottom part okay periproct is basically the part which surrounds the anus in what in echinoids okay so you can see here this is the periproct which surrounds anus in echinoids deltidial plane okay it is basically in brachiopods Delthidium, okay. You already know that structure in, uh, in 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 case of brachiopods, and lunule is kind of like this crescent moon-shaped depression that you find in bivalves. So considering these, you can see the correct option here is two. So trilobite will have hypostome, brachiopod has the deltidial plane, bivalve has lunule, and echinoid has periproct. During high temperature metamorphism of pilites, which of the following mineral reactions represents the second selenide grain? This question has been asked at least third time. All every time the same equation is given, just the names, different names are given. Okay, since 2018. So the correct answer is muscovite reacts with quartz to give you selenite, K feldspar, and H2O. Which of the following represents deviatoric stress in 2D? stress more circle so you have deviatoric stress and you have differential stress so your differential is maximum principal stress minus minimum principal stress
which is basically simply sigma 1 minus sigma 3 then you have deviatoric stress which is again also maximum principal stress minus mean stress deviatoric stress actually you can calculate for if it is a 3d more circle you can calculate in three directions also okay even in 2d you can calculate in two direction with respect to sigma 1 with respect to sigma 3 but both of these will be same in case of 2d more circle okay so it is maximum or any of the principal stresses minus mean stress okay so it can be for example if you're talking about 3d more circle it can be sigma 1 minus sigma mean sigma 2 minus sigma mean and sigma 3 minus sigma mean if it is 2d it will be sigma 1 minus sigma mean and sigma 3 minus sigma mean which sorry sigma mean minus sigma 3 okay so i will write in these cases at least you know we don't know if it will be a positive number so i will write them under this mode okay so if you these will be both the same in case of 2d same magnitude okay so you don't need to differentiate them okay so this is deviatoric now if you talk about mohar circle you know this is sigma 1 this is sigma 3 and this is sigma mean which is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 3 over 2 for 3d sigma mean will be equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 over 3 okay so you see sigma sorry this labeling is not correct this should be sigma 3 and this should be sigma 1 so you see sigma 1 minus sigma mean also the correct answer is here or this okay so this is equal to this distance which is radius okay whereas if you look at this differential stress sigma 1 minus sigma 3 it is this much so that is equal to diameter this is radius and in the question they are asking you about deviatoric so the correct answer here is radius the center is mean stress sometimes you can also call confining i don't know if there is any pole here and diameter is basically your differential all right in the fold profile section shown in figure one and three the oldest and youngest stratigraphic units respectively which one of the following folds description correctly matches the asymmetric fold shown in the figure antiform facing east inform facing east okay so first of all antiform is whether it is closing upwards or downwards so if it is an antiform it is it closes upwards so just based on this geometry you know it is an antiform and facing direction is basically your younging direction okay so you can see here the correct sequence okay figure one and three are oldest and youngest so one is oldest and three is youngest okay so just based on this you know this is a syncline or an anticline this is a syncline the core has younger uh, so this is actually a sin anti-formal syncline but they have not asked you whether it is anti-formal syncline option it is facing direction so younging direction so uh, it's actually younging downwards okay that is what a syncline is but uh, that if you look at like because this is asymmetric so whether it is younging like that way that is westward or that way eastward so it is younging westwards if it was an anticline if one was youngest then the facing direction would have been that way like that eastwards so here it is 
facing west okay so what will be the correct option if it is facing west it will be it is a it is a sin it is an antiform which is facing west all right if x represents initial composition of melt which of the following trends indicated by arrows in the schematic diagram corresponds to evolution of residual melt corresponding to composition okay during crystallization of diopside so when a particular mineral is crystallizing the components of that mineral will be taken away from the residual melt so the residual melt will get, they get depleted in those components relatively it will get enriched in another component okay because if you say like what is a percentage total percentage it has to add up to 100 okay so so here x represents initial so this is your initial composition and you know diopside formula is mg ca si2 o6 okay so what is happening in this particular case is mg is crystallizing okay it has calcium in it also uh, it is a clinopyroxene okay so magnesium is getting crystallized so what will happen to magnesium concentration it will decrease it is also taking away calcium with it so this is calcium to al2o3 ratio there is no al2o3 being taken so al2o3 will stay in the system calcium is being taken out so in the residual melt the ratio of co to al2o3 will decrease and because mgo is also being taken out so this is also going to decrease here ratio is not given absolute amount is given so mgo will decrease in absolute amount as well okay co also will decrease in absolute amount but it will also decrease relative to al23 so because both are decreasing the correct answer should be uh, this this path number three so it will go with c one thing to keep in mind is many times in these questions uh, it could be given that two three four one okay then you'll have to choose option b so sometimes students can commit a mistake that they found three over here they will up mark option c be kind of like your brain works that way okay it will automatically correlate it is always important to see what the options are there don't mark this question just by looking at this diagram because you don't know whether three corresponds to option number c or not match the following copper deposits in group one with their host rock in group two so it is kind of like a factual question so the correct answer for this uh in k3 you have garnetiferous chloride schist okay in mosabani you have chloride biochist biotite schist and soda granite mananjkan copper deposit you know it's in a granite so it is tonalite uh granular direct granite just i think this this is the easiest of all the options to match and if you can match r with four at least you can eliminate these two options you are left with 50 50 choice and Kaliadi is a meta chart so the correct answer over here is c which of the following events represents termination of a wilson cycle in plate tectonics so wilson cycle is initiated by continental rift opening of the continental basin and then an ocean is created in between and finally it the the, the final phase is closing of that ocean basin with continental collision so the correct answer is here is c so you can see here this wilson cycle starts in the embryonic stage with uh formation of continental rift and if it continues the rift is created and finally it ends with uh the terminal st suturing stage in which you have convergence uplift and continental collision fraction of incident electromagnetic radiation energy reflected from a material is known as so if you have gone through our climate lecture okay when you calculate the uh, let's say what would have been earth's temperature if there was no greenhouse effect we did that exercise so where they we took we, we took an albedo value of to calculate what the temperature of earth will be in absence of greenhouse effect okay so you have some incoming radiation okay and some of it is reflected back which is 0 0.3 times the incident radiation that is the albedo most of it comes from clouds clouds have the maximum contribution oh sorry i think this i remember the different question i'll cut this in one question they asked you about the albedo of the earth as well okay so fraction of incident energy that is reflected from a material is known as albedo 
okay so i don't need to explain this question again over there okay so i will just hopefully be able to copy this part thing which of the following statements regarding or deposit is correct both replacement and exaltive ors are possible in sedex type deposits that is true okay so both both exaltives the exaltive is possible it is name it is present in the name sedimentary exaltive but you can get replacement deposits there as well uh, the second option is rampur agucha leads in deposits are mvt type no they are sedex type so this is wrong orogenic gold deposit is an epigenetic type deposit yes okay it forms like after the formation of uh, of of the host rock fluid boiling in early stage of magmatic crystallization is is, is responsible for uh, copper molybdenum deposit so typically this is like related to porphyry copper deposit okay to get that porphyry okay you need uh, kind of like that initial boiling uh gives that kind of like explosive energy to form the porphyry now this particular one should come where basically i will do cut and paste both these this will come uh there was a question on source maturation determination let me copy this i'll have to probably paste them over there yes over here i'll come which of the following sedimentary structures are found in intertidal deposit okay so when you are talking about tides okay so what happens is in tides so you have high tide when the water rises every 6 hours you'll see the tide will change and then you have low tide when the water will fall down okay so above this you have supra tidal in between you have intertidal and then you have subtidal so subtidal is always underwater intertidal is for part of uh, of, of, of the sequence it is more like for uh, some time during high tide it is submerged during low tide it is exposed okay so this one is always underwater okay supratidal is always above water okay so now if you look at this ladder back ripple okay so this is found in intertidal environment These are kind of like, for example, climbing ripples. Rain print whenever you have some exposure. Okay, so you will see rain prints. So these will be found in supra as well as intertidal zone. So this will, this is correct. This is correct. Double mud drape. Now mud drape is basically what happens is, let's say, uh, in in these tidal environments, so you have fluctuating energy. So when, for example you are changing from low tide to high tide so the water will come high energy it will stay there so there is flow and ebb cycle okay so during flow you get basically coarse grain and during ebb you get fine grain deposits so what can happen is so for example you have a sand ripple like this which formed during flow stage it can get draped over drape is kind of like a blanket blanketed over by mud deposit which is fine okay during when the flow is not there now what will happen is this double mud drape will occur in two situations okay when when you are basically going from low to high and high to low in both the situation when there is high energy environment you will see this double mud drape now that will only be possible in subtitle environment because in intertidal environment okay it was submerged during high tide so one drape can form during that stage but when it is low tide it is not submerged so during that stage this mud drape will not form because now no de no deposition is taking place here okay so when the tide has receded 
when there was high energy state now it is exposed so mud deposition cannot take place at that stage so you'll see it will see mud drapes but single mud drapes and there will be no mud drapes in supra tidal and mud crack okay rain print unit exposure so that will form so this and this are correct options and mud crack again forms due to desiccation okay when you have something which is wet it dries out okay so it is an evidence of exposure and you know in intertidal environment for some time the sediments are exposed so they can dry out and form this mud crack so the correct options here will be a b and d question number 58 which of the following materials are used for a hydrocarbon source rock maturation based on color so you know have you have the conodont alteration index and you have spore coloration index so these two are correct options you can go through these tables in detail so basically the color of the spore or the conodont conodont is basically a, a, a micro fossil of of organisms which are called conodonts so it is basically these are basically teeth of those organisms usually uh, from conodonts we only have teeth which are preserved we don't have the whole specimen which is preserved okay you can look at these tables to find out what is the maturation range of 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 the organic matter in rocks based on the colors of conodonts or spores which of the following schist beds occur to the east of close fed granite in southern india so options are shimoga kolar bavudan kurti so you can see here shimoga is here it is to the west bavagudan is also west okay kolar is east and kurti is also east so to the east you have kolar and kurti the diagram given below shows phase relation between components p q at one bar pressure okay pressure is fixed one bar if x represents initial composition which of the following statements are correct during equilibrium crystallization okay so is are correct so msq type initial compos liquid composition is 60% weight of p and 40% weight of q so this is the initial composition x here so it says 60 here okay you see it is closer to q and it is further away from p so you know from liver principle that p by q okay is equal to so this is p that is this distance is okay the whole thing the whole thing is 100 so the composition of p p percentage over here is i will not say ratio here p is basically you have to from liver principle you have to take this distance okay which is 40 by 100 into 100 of the total distance equal to 40%. So if p is 40%, q is 60%. Okay and also you know like it is far away from p and it is closer to q the initial composition so q should be more. So the first option is not correct. q should be 60%, p should be 40%. The composition of the solid in equilibrium with liquid at y. So this is a liquid at y. So this is a solid in equilibrium we are talking about for option number b. is 10% weight of p and 90% q so it is closer to q you can see here and it says 90 so whatever see you see here 20 is q 40 q this was 60 q that was this option was wrong 40 q was given here 80 q 90 q so this option is right you can use liver principle for that the bulk composition of the final solid product will be because it is equilibrium crystallization so the bulk solid final solid after you have crystallized everything so crystallization ends here so this is the bulk solid for option number c we are talking about so it is here so it is 60% q 40% p 40% p so this is correct the proportion of two phases mss and nss is 1 is to 2 at 750 degree celsius so this is mss and then nss so this bulk solid it keeps cooling 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 here it hits solvus so it will Exolve into two different solids. Solids as it cools more and more. Okay, at any given stage. So, for example, at this stage, the composition of the solids is this and this. At this stage, the composition is MSS and NSS. And you can see here MSS by NSS composition. The ratios from liver principle. It is equal to. Let me call this distance as A. Let me call this distance as B. It is equal to A by 
b okay so a is equal to 60 minus 80 okay is equal to 20 and b is 60 minus 20 which is 40 so mss is to nss is equal to 20 by 40 is equal to 1 by 2 1 is to 2 at 750 degree celsius so d is also correct which of the following is are correct for m plane on any fault plane so m plane is basically your movement plane okay so this is from fossen book you can find okay so what is the movement plane on a fault block okay let me show you that image okay so let's say this is one fault block this is the foot wall this is the hanging wall so in this case it is not simply a dip slip fault like this so it is an oblique slip fault let's say this block has slipped in that direction how do you know that like you can look at these slicken lines or slicken sides here which are kind of like not present like this okay it could have been like this also still you will get that plane now what happens is a plane so because the movement has been like this so if you pass a plane through this slicken line okay a plane passing through the slicken line so there can be infinite number of planes passing through, the, through that slicken line now what you do is this plane is passed in such a way okay such that the pole of this plane is lying the pole means perpendicular to this movement plane because it is parallel to this movement direction that is slicken side should be in that plane so 90 degree okay it is in this plane so this is the pole to the m plane so let me just p write p over there p is pole to m plane movement plane okay so this is how this movement plane is constructed so let's see some of the options m plane pole is located on the fault plane this is by definition yes that is true okay m plane pole again that p is perpendicular to slicken lines yes that is also true because if it is passing through the slicken lines are parallel to the m plane the movement plane because the pole of the of m plane is perpendicular to m plane it is also perpendicular to those slicken lines okay so this is also true m plane pole of a fault so again it is m plane m plane pole it is not pole of a fault so this wording can be a bit confusing so m plane pole this m plane is related to a fault okay m plane pole of a fault is parallel to silicon line no it is you can see this p is not parallel to silicon line so this is not correct the m plane pole of a fault is perpendicular to pole to the fault plane so the pole to the fault plane is like this okay this line silicon line is present in the fault plane so the slicken line is present to is, is 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 perpendicular to the pole of the fault now because this m plane is parallel to slicken line so this is for pole to the fault is also perpendicular to this m plane pole okay this is also a correct answer so this is kind of like stereo net that you get for these so this is your actual fault plane on this plane you have this lineation okay you have this lineation so and then you take this is the slip plane you take the pole to the slip plane this is pole to the slip plane basically your fault plane okay so this is lineation so you a plane which is passing through lineation and pole to the slip plane this is your m plane okay and this stereo net can also help you answer all these options here which of the following micro fossils is our foraminifera okay milliamina is a foraminifera okay triceratium is a diatom okay cbcides is a foraminifera okay and 
Vembeltria is also a foraminifera. The in situ stress at a point in dry sandstone terrain is sigma 1 equals to 12 MPa. Okay, it is 12 megapascal. Sigma 3 is equal to 4 megapascal. The failure criterion is given to you sigma 1 equals to 3.48 MPa plus 3 sigma 3. It is given in terms of sigma 1 prime and sigma 3 prime which are effective maximum and minimum stress. It is not given to you in terms of sigma n and sigma s which we typically use. Assuming failure occurs at peak stress, the minimum possible value of PW that is pore water pressure that will cause the sandstone to fail. Okay, you have to calculate. So basically what is your pore water pressure? So let's say inside these pores you have presence of water. When you compress, let's say the rock from different sides, let's say you have sigma 3 in this direction, sigma 1 in this direction. This pore water pressure acts opposite to these, but it is equal in all directions. This PW is equal in all direction. So it is kind of like opposing that outside compressional stress. So what happens here is that, that finally your sigma 3 effective prime becomes sigma 3 minus pore water pressure. Similarly, sigma 1 effective becomes equal to sigma 1 minus pore water pressure. Okay. And what this can cause failure, this can cause failure of the rocks. How? Let's say this is your Mohr circle we will construct. Okay, and let's say using a green line. This is your fracture envelope. And if your Mohr circle is somewhere over here with sigma 1 and sigma 3, Okay, what it can do is what because if you this PW decreases sigma 3 decreases sigma 1. So what it can do to your Mohr circle is it can move it westward like this. Okay, so oh sorry or like towards the region and which can cause failure. Okay, so let me move these lines a little bit and this one a little bit not too much. A little bit more okay so if it moves this circle in that let me move it make it a little bit bigger also small so if it moves here it can intersect basically this fracture envelope which is given to you by this equation given in the question sigma 1 prime equals to 3.48 plus 3 sigma 3 prime okay these values are given to you as 4 and 12 okay now they will be both reduced by so the new one will become 4 minus pw and this one will become 12 minus pw okay so this new failure criterion will be sigma 1 prime is sigma 1 basically minus pw it is 12 minus PW is equal to 3.48 plus 3 4 minus PW. You can solve this equation very simply, okay, and you'll get that PW equals to 1.74 MPa. Okay, so that is your correct answer here is 1.74. The RBSR isochrone okay formed by a suit of gabbro samples has a slope of 0 0.265 the calculated age of the gabbro in million years okay so from the isochrone technique you know the slope is equal to e raised to power lambda t minus 1 now this is a question which it is important to keep in mind okay which you can challenge in exam it's not like the answer is incorrect you can ask the range to be increased okay so using this equation you have basically slope is given to a 0 
two six five, and then you have e. Okay, lambda is given to you as one point four two. I'll just keep it lambda t only for the time being. Minus one. Okay, so it will become one plus this value. Okay, so lambda t equals to l n one point zero two six five. So the age of the rock is ln one point zero two six five, which is basically zero point zero two six one divided by one point four two into ten raised to the power minus eleven. Okay, which is equal to one eight four one point six into ten raised to the power six, because they have asked you in. Million years, so you can write here. The correct answer will be one eight four two. Now, in all standard books, you will also find that e raised to power lambda t minus one can be approximated as lambda t. That is why in isochrone techniques you get these straight lines. Okay, so age you can see here. Okay, that slope. Is equal to lambda t. Okay, so it forms this linear relationship. So now, if you use this, okay, because now this is an approximation, so you will not get exactly same answer, but it should be similar. So t equals to, okay, so lambda t equals to slope, which is approximated as this one. So t will be slope by lambda, and slope is zero point zero two six five. Lambda is One point four two into ten raised to power minus eleven. If you solve this, you get basically one eight six six point nine. Okay. So in the exam, the range that they have given is one eight four zero to one eight four five. So you can ask for this to be increased to one eight seven zero, for example, one eight four zero to one eight seven zero. Okay. All right. The final question of the exam. A soil mass comprises two horizontal layers of equal thickness and equal width. Okay, so you have these two layers, where k one and k two of different hydraulic conductivities are given as five into ten raised to the power minus three and three into ten raised to the power minus three. Okay, so five into ten raised to the power minus two centimeter per second. Final answer is being asked in centimeter per second, so no need for unit conversion. Three into ten raised to the power minus two centimeter per second. The thicknesses, I will say, saturated thicknesses B one, B two are given. So in those cases, because these are in parallel, not in series, so your average hydraulic conductivity is K one B one plus K two B two divided by B one plus B two. Now both, what is given to you is B one equals to B two. So if you do this, your K becomes simply equals to K one plus K two by two. So you can put, for example, instead of B one and B two, you can put B in numerator and B in denominator. Okay, so it will become K one B plus K two B divided by B plus B. So B will get cancelled, and you'll get this relation. And if you solve this, K will become is equal to five uh, plus three divided by two, the whole thing into ten raised to power minus two, which you can take out. Okay, so it becomes overall four into ten raised to power minus two centimeter per second. Which is equal to zero point zero four, which will be your correct answer. So with this, we finish uh, gate solutions for twenty twenty four gate geology exam. If you still have any doubts or questions, please post them in your uh, in, in in the comments section. And with this, I'll take your leave. Thank you all very much, and those who are starting your preparation for the next year, all the very best. Thank you all.